Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the Use Data and Measurement for App Marketing Success webinar. I'm Leland Prickett from Yahoo, presenting today with Katie Hetcherson from Adjust, and we have a few announcements before we begin. The presentation portion of this webinar should last approximately 25 minutes, and we will allow plenty of time at the end for Q&A. Although audio is muted, you can participate in the Q&A session by asking questions at any time. Just type your questions in the Q&A text area located to the left of the presentation window, and then click the Submit button. We also recommend you disable your pop-up blockers. The slides will advance automatically throughout the event. If you experience any technical problems during the webinar, you can submit your request for technical help through the Q&A text area or by visiting our webinar help guide by clicking the help link below the presentation window. And with that, we'll begin. For today's speakers, you have myself, Leland Prickett from Yahoo, and I'm a senior manager working on the performance strategy team. My job is to build demand and drive performance for App Install across the Gemini network. And from Adjust, we have Katie Hutcherson, where she is the director of product. And with Adjust global support and growth, Katie travels often to meet new industry leaders and find out the next big thing in mobile marketing. In today's webinar, our goal is to help you drive app install success using Adjust and Gemini. Katie will be covering how to best use measurement within Adjust. Then I'll go into how to fully utilize the integration between Adjust and Gemini to get the most out of your campaigns. And lastly, I'll review app marketing best practices within Gemini. And with that, I'm happy to turn the floor over to Katie. So a little on Adjust. We were founded in 2012 by Christian Henschel, Paul Mueller, and Manuel Neat. What began as a small mobile attribution company with these three employees based in Berlin has now grown to 14 offices with around 150 employees globally. Recently launching full support for our domestic Chinese market, we now have around 22,000 integrated SDKs worldwide. For 2017, Adjust has decided to focus on some of the biggest issues we found in the mobile marketing ecosystem, data transparency and fragmentation. So let's get into transparency. Currently, app publishers run a multitude of campaigns in an effort to not only increase their user base, but also keep their power users engaged. While these publishers spend countless time and money creating these campaigns, they unfortunately lose out on the bottom line. Was my campaign a success? Basically, what was my ROI? And at the moment, unfortunately, there's no data transparency around this critical KPI. Additionally, our focus is fragmentation. Once app publishers have run their campaigns, it comes time to measure them. In order to properly measure and calculate the ROI metric, along with other conversion KPIs, Marketers typically have to use a minimal of three different tools to determine this simple KPI. Some publishers even try to calculate this using their own BI system. To give some visualization to this, just picture 10 spreadsheets open across two large displays. Yeah, not great. Knowing these two major pain points for mobile marketers, Adjust began 2017 with Mobile Measurement 2.0. This included three big ticket feature releases to start the year. Hourly data, improved ROI, and the audience builder. First, let's go into hourly data with custom time zones. While this is pretty self-explanatory, it's something that's crucial for clients running burst campaigns or wanting to really target users at certain times in their daily routines at a global scale. This more granular view allows clients to make inferences like, my Yahoo in-app interstitials are best shown on Fridays from 5 to 8 p.m. PST when users are winding down from a long work week and want to relax. Next is our improved ROI calculation. While clients have always been able to send Adjust in-app purchases along with revenue events, Adjust now also collects CPM, CPC, and CPI data. By clients tracking differing custom events within Adjust, we can determine how much our clients paid not only for the user's install, but also how this cost is applied to the user's in-app activity over time. For example, you may be paying a $3 CPI with your Yahoo carousel ads. 
But within Adjust, you'll be able to see that users coming from these ads actually have the highest retention and are the most likely to make in-app purchases within the first week after install. Finally, we have our audience builder. Due to our extensive cohort reporting, we have now created a tool that allows our clients to pull very specific segments from any app associated with their Adjust account. Here they can get a list of advertising IDs or push tokens that can be shared via a dynamic link with any partner. So let's say, for example, you're launching a new app called Hotel and Rental. Your existing app called Travel Now has 300,000 daily active users. Knowing that your current Travel Now users constantly ask where to stay, how to get around, you can use the Audience Builder to create a segment of all users who've had a session in Travel Now in the past week and have triggered a search event. Basically, your most active Travel Now users. Once you've created this segment, you'll see a dynamic link that includes all of these users' advertising IDs. You can then share this with Yahoo, for example. Yahoo can then go out and target all of these super active Travel Now users directly to get them to try out the new hotel and rental app. All of these features tie directly into our Yahoo partnership and integration. For clients to begin tracking Yahoo Gemini campaigns, they simply need to go to our app settings, partner setup, select their Yahoo module, and then enter the necessary credentials. Adjust is able to send Yahoo not only install and session data, but also any of the custom event data that our clients set up all in real time. Going into Adjust Statistics, you can see all of your campaigns very easily. You can even customize your reports to always show, for example, users who are from the U.S. on iOS and view this data in PST. You can then save these reports and access them as soon as you log into the dashboard. I always highly recommend that our clients set their custom reports, especially when they're pulling the same KPIs weekly. Clients can even use our KPI API to pull these stats regularly without logging into the dashboard. Next, you can choose how you want this data displayed. For many clients, our graphs offer a more aesthetically pleasing way of displaying data and sharing this with other members of their marketing teams. In this example, you can see that we're looking at our fraud seat, where we can see which channels we're finding the most rejected installs. With Adjust, we reject anything we deem fraudulent in real time, so there's no hassle at month end when you have to go to settle up with your partners. We also share this data in real time with partners to ensure that they understand where this fraud is coming from, what type of fraud it is, and how to prevent it. Lastly, I wanted to share our cohorts data. Within our dashboard, this is where clients can come who want to get a more in-depth analysis of their users over time. We still very much see the 2080 rule, where 20% of our clients' user base comprises 80% of our, their revenue. This is why cohorts and understanding your groups of users is crucial. Within Adjust Cohorts, you can see which of your Yahoo inventory, for example, brings through users with the highest retention and LTV. You can see how long it takes these users to trigger certain events, for example, login, first purchase, and even check how much time they're spending within your app. Overall, this is where I always highly encourage clients to spend the majority of their time, as understanding cohorts can allow you to not only know your existing base, but then apply this logic to keep growing that user base for your app. So I hope this gives everyone a taste of not only what Adjust main point of focus is for this year, but also our special integration with Yahoo and how to quickly and easy measure this within your Adjust dashboard. With all the points Katie just mentioned, your ability to measure and control every aspect of your campaign is at your fingertips. And it only reinforces using an attribution partner like Adjust is critical for app businesses to understand their marketing effectiveness. Yahoo knows the value of partnerships, and that's why we have integrated to a number of partners, including Adjust, to give app developers options and controls to make business decisions based on neutral third parties. We send back over a dozen fields from Gemini to give you the information needed to make marketing decisions. For example, which publishers drive the best ROI? In fact, 
Our philosophy at Yahoo is to offer our advertisers multiple measurement options, from viewability with IAS and Moat, audience measurement with Comscore and Nielsen, server-side app measurement integrations, along with brand impact, behavioral impact, offline sales, and foot traffic. And all of this reinforces our commitment to partnerships and unbiased third-party measurement to ensure you're getting the most out of your marketing dollars. So next, let's talk about how to best use Adjust with Gemini. Gemini has a wealth of proprietary data sources that powers our app marketing features. We have data across search, content, social, mail, and apps, and we use these signals to drive performance for your app install campaigns. Additionally, you can bring in your own data into the picture with website actions, mobile device IDs across iOS and Android, email lists that we can match against our 1 billion global users, and those critical in-app events. You can also bring in third-party segments to further refine targeting. One of the many benefits using Adjust is to track installs. We always recommend using server-to-server -server over click tracking URLs because it's easier to manage and reduces campaign overhead. It also makes delivery more efficient since we won't show an ad to a user who already installed the app, even from a different network. Gemini also sends over a dozen data points back to Adjust so you can report on campaign information, hashed site ID, and IP address. Gemini also offers the ability to track those critical in-app events. And since Adjust is an integrated partner of ours, it's an easy way to ensure your campaigns are delivering deeper funnel KPIs. So whether your goal is to drive signups, subscriptions, free trials, or first purchases, event tracking is a sure way to measure your goals. What's exciting is we have two new pilot features that continue to highlight the importance of your Adjust SDK, app re-engagement and post-install optimization. For app re-engagement, the server-to-server -server integration with Adjust informs Gemini which users downloaded your app. This gives you the opportunity to re-engage users who have already expressed interest in your app but haven't taken a specific action, all to help increase acquisition and encourage retention. For post-install optimization, all algorithm goes beyond the impression beyond the click, and beyond the install, into the key action that drives your business. Using a pixel ID from Gemini, Adjust sends over event-level data, making sure we deliver to your KPIs. And I don't have it listed here on the slide, but as a side note, we have carousel ads available to pilot as well. So I've gone through how to best utilize your Adjust SDK, and now I'll quickly cover some high-level best practices so you can start your campaign off on the right foot. So first, promote one app per account. This will help contain the learnings from the campaigns isolated to a single app ID and will prevent the competition against the same app when the auction takes place. The next best practice is add copy refresh. It's important to start with enough creative for the system to test during the expiration period. Usually two to three ads per ad group is a good starting point, but try to avoid going beyond 10. If there's not enough variation, it may not gain traction with limited choices. Also, creative refresh is critical to avoid having your app become stale. Try new variations every two to three weeks by replacing poor performing ads. This next recommendation is one of the more important best practices, and that's to limit targeting and keep it as open as possible. In general, our algorithm runs best in an open environment, exploring all options to determine where performance lives. And while Gemini does offer targeting like age and gender, Adding a lot of targeting can hamper scale and limit opportunity. More often than not, we see better performance from open campaigns than highly targeted ones. Furthermore, avoid frequent account changes, like modifying your CPI goal, targeting, or budgets. And this gives the algorithm time to learn under a set of stable conditions to hit your goals. Next, to maximize your scale, promote both platforms to ensure you're fully covered across both iOS and Android. And if applicable, Try to tailor your images to match the platform you're targeting to ensure that any Apple, iTunes, or Google Play logos match the device and campaign. And don't just rely on display. If you have the assets, run video. Video is an engaging ad format and tends to have higher conversion rates compared to static display. It also opens up more inventory, enhancing your reach. Try tiering your CPIs by format, platform, and geography. This will give you more control to fine-tune your budgets and performance. If you have a global strategy, you'll want to localize your creative. Know your audience and the local culture. 
This might seem really obvious, but localized creatives typically perform better. This includes not only language, but copy with relevant imagery that resonates to a particular country. Always track your core events. Even if you don't want to optimize to the critical event, tracking big stages of activity within your app can help strategize where certain campaigns perform better. It also enables you to take advantage of reporting capabilities within the Gemini UI so you can calculate your CPA. If you're optimizing for the post-install event, don't forget to provide CPA values so you can, your account team can work towards your goals. So the last two recommendations I have for you is around taking advantage of new features. As I mentioned earlier, we have two new pilots to enhance your marketing efforts, app re-engagement and post-install optimization. With app re-engagement, you can get those win backs and engage with users who have already expressed interest in your app. Re-engagement can remind users of your unique value prop and make it easy to take action within your app. And lastly, your strategy will dictate your KPIs. If you're looking for scale, try CPC. If you're looking for installs, try CPI. And if you're looking for in-app events, try CPA. And as the industry continues to evolve from the CPC to CPI to CPA, take advantage of a system that will focus on your specific in-app events. So before we open up to Q&A, you may have noticed a survey widget that's part of the webinar. It's a quick five question survey and we would greatly appreciate your participation. Your feedback is valuable so we can improve future webinars and can cover topics that are important to you. For more information on Gemini and Adjust, please visit our websites at advertising.yahoo.com and adjust.com. So thank you very much for your time today and let's open it up to some Q&A. Hi there, so we do have a couple of questions. Um, one of them is around uh, when app re-engagement will go live in the UA, basically um, at coming out of pilot. And we're thinking about putting that, uh, aiming for that to be released in at the end of the quarter or early Q3. And we have another, Q, another question here coming in about how video campaigns um, perform compared to static campaigns. Um, and so generally, we see a little bit more inventory with, um, with static. So the, the click-through rates tend to be a touch higher um, than compared to video. But when we look at the conversion rates, basically the click to the install, they're a lot higher um, because I think the intent um, is a little bit better um, from a user that's clicking on the video that would be interested in that particular app offering. So the next question that we have is around how to um, go through the rejection process if an ad was um, rejected through the Gemini UI. Um, and that would be best if you would follow up with your creative strategist um, on the Yahoo account team. And they're the ones that can help kind of vet the, the um, editorial process a little bit more with you. Um, so if you don't have um, a, a creative strategist, you can go through the help. Um, as the help desk through the UI as well. So the follow-up question that we're getting is around how do we get a creative strategist? Um, so typically in a managed account where you're working with an account director, an account manager, there's usually one assigned. Um, we do have ones that uh, can help through a queue. Um, so again, you could work with uh, if you, you know, the AD or contact help um, through Gemini and um, ask for a creative strategist to help kind of review that for you.
So we have another question that came through around how to tag events with this tool. So um, the, the way that we would do this through Adjust is you would go through and create the events that you want to track inside of Adjust, and then you would use a pixel ID within Gemini, and that's within the shared library. So you would basically create um, mimicking event within Gemini and using the event name exactly how it's spelt between the two systems. Um, and then there's usually um, a, a slight delay, and then the system should be able to um, validate that there's activity within that specific event. And I can let um, Katie as well chime in if she has any other um, feedback or advice to give around setting up custom events within Adjust. Yeah, so Adjust is pretty open when it comes to custom events. And um, similar to what Leland was mentioning regarding your ad creative, we always say you definitely want to set up a minimum of two to three different custom events. So, for example, this could be a login and then that purchase, maybe a first ride. Um, but you really want to map out what your user's journey is. So what are those first five critical things that a user should be doing within your app? And those are what we typically recommend to set up as your custom events. Adjust does allow you to send us custom events server to server as well. So let's say, for example, that you've submitted your app to the store, you've integrated the SDK, and you've realized, oh, wow, there's an event that I totally forgot to have my developers track. You can set this up to be sent to a server side, and you have up to 28 days to actually send us this event. So if you need to do some sort of verification on your end, you can totally do that. Um, we'll still get the created app timestamp and then attribute it accordingly. So with all of that said, um, there's definitely certain events that uh, allow you to do much better retargeting, especially when it comes to working with partners like Yahoo. So I would say first and foremost, always do an app purchase or any other sort of revenue-related event, um, as well as a login or a first activity. Good. Hopefully that helped, Miguel. So the next question is around a customer helpline. Um, right now, it's uh, basically done through email support. So if you have questions that need to go through um, that you don't have, like a managed account, for example, you could just go through um, the email process, but there's no helpline that I'm aware of. And we can also, if, you know, touch base via email if you um, want help getting some direction on a, an individual to touch base with or um, and a support alias to start. All right. Well, if there's no other further questions coming through the chat pod, um, we can end the webinar. Again, thank you for attending today, and please, if you can, fill out the survey uh, that's in the, the survey pod um, within the webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.